this new time. First up. Okay, first up, there's this really sweet keyboard hub from Raspberry Pi Foundation. Now this is the official Raspberry Pi keyboard. And it's really nice, it's a chiclet keyboard, but it's got a really great feeling to it. Uh, of course we got the black and gray version. They also have a white and red version, but like, I don't want that. My black is the best color. That's why everything is Adafruit black here. Yeah. Um, so we've got uh, this keyboard and uh, it's a QWERTY keyboard. Uh, it's got up, down, left, right arrows, which is kind of nice. And the best part of all it has is hub built in. Check this out. So use a micro, it comes with a micro USB cable, which I think is kind of nice. The cable's not built in, so you can use any length cable you like. And it's got a hub. So when you connect it to like your Pi Zero, or if you have like an original Raspberry Pi or Pi A, you'll get three more ports. So you can plug in your mouse, which we'll talk about in a moment, or you know, a USB key or whatever, and it just, like the Raspberry Pi is smart enough to know how to use it as a hub. Of course, you can use it with other computers. You don't have to use it with a Pi, but it's got that sweet Pi look. And we've got these LEDs at the top, the Raspberry Pi button. I guess this is kind of like the Windows button, but not. Yeah. And uh, easy to use, and we got it with the uh, English American layout. Yep. So that's the Raspberry Pi official keyboard. And you're saying, but I'd want maybe the mouse. You want a to mouse? Go along with that. Well, they have a great optical mouse that goes with it. It's a two button, sorry, it's a three button mouse because the, the wheel is also a button. Uh, it's a great feeling mouse, uh, really well made, optical, simple, um, durable, and. Uh, the, the cord isn't super long, but it's meant to plug into the keyboard. So for that, it works really well. Yeah. And uh, try it out. Again, works with any computer you like. It's got a, a scrolling clicky wheel uh, with a nice uh, scroll action. I can use this as like an everyday mouse, definitely. It's yeah. Nice. So this and one's going in my buttons. travel bag for when like, you know, you need a mouse and you want a small mouse that just like does one or two things. Cause I have like a desktop mouse that's crazy that has like 80 buttons, but. This travel. just works. Yeah. And it's they have really good see. quality, so I'm sure it's like the you know, I can tell the molding is really yeah. nice. It's very durable. It's like Raspberry Pi's transition into like Microsoft makes amazing keyboards and mice. Yeah. And like Raspberry Pi's. Well, there's a new Microsoft. Now. Okay. All right, so that's the that's Raspberry Pi mouse and keyboard. Yeah, and we have a bunch of different colors of these. I'll just yeah. So this is classic, point one inch gold plate mail header that you know and love. We've had them for a very very long time. I think product number three ninety two, which is like ancient. Uh, yeah. It's like 4,200 know, now. But now we have it in multiple colors. So we have a 10 pack white, 10 pack blue, yeah. oh. 10 pack red, 10 pack yellow, and 10 pack green, which is kind of a minty green. Um, but it is green. Uh, and then we also have a rainbow pack where you get two of each color. Um, we also, of course, still sell the black plastic ones. Uh, but I'll show these off on the overhead real fast. I'll just show the rainbow kit. That's kind of what is the most fun. So yeah, this is the standard uh, headers that you know and love. Um, so they're break apart. So oh, maybe I'll risk it. I'll break break these headers. So you get them in uh, 36 pin long header bits, but you know you can very easily break them apart um, with hands or with diagonal cutters into any length you like. Um, the female headers don't break as easily. It's just not possible to do so, but you can with the male headers. And yeah, we get red white, yellow, green, blue. So if you want to have like power pins be red and then data is white and blue and then high voltage is green and then yellow means something. And then of course um, we have the black as well standard. So um, I thought these were really cool and uh, they're at the same price as the black header ones. They just come in multiple yeah. colors. So that's the male headers. Okay. Nice now set. you're probably wondering, wow, you know, I wish I had female headers as well. We have those too. Now I couldn't get these in 36 pin long, I'm still gonna work on it, but for now I could get the 20 pin. So uh, 20 pin headers, again, white, blue, red, there's a nice red, yellow, green, and a rainbow pack where you get one of each. Now female headers are not as cheap as male headers because the plastic's more complicated and the pins are more complicated. So you only get one of it. You get five packs, not 10 packs. Yeah. And they're 20 pins, not uh, 36 pins. But regardless, uh, they're just like plain female headers. You can use them exactly where other standard 8.5 millimeter tall headers are. 0.1 inch pitch. Uh, they're gold plate. They mate with any other kind of headers. And uh, they're like Lego colors, which is amazing. Okay. So that's 
all the headers that's fit to print. So we got colorful headers for your right. project. Make it a little bit specialer. This is a clear tube. Mm, I love clear tube. <laughs> you like you come to the Adafruit for lots of things. Now you come here for clear tube. You came here for clear tube. This is it's actually kind of special clear tube. This is side light fiber optic. It's also kind of like not. It's it's hard to say it. It's like it's just not good fiber optic, <laughs> right? It's like kind of okay fiber optic, um, but it emits color. It emits light from the side, which uh, means you can. It has a I, cool glowing effect. Should I, show, should I reveal? Yes, please reveal. Da -da. Yeah. So it is fiber optic. You can see it is brightest at the end, but it does emit light. That's what you want. You don't want all the light just coming out the end. You want to use this as yeah. a, like if almost. If it's perfect fiber optic, you, it wouldn't, yeah. the thing wouldn't be glowing. You'd only see light so coming at the end. Let me tell you who this is probably for. So like EL wire, Isn't it's fine. Great. It's fine. But. It makes a little noise. I think, you know, I still get emails once in a while. People are like, it, EL, I bought EL and it's broken because it makes noise. And you can't dim it. You can't dim it, you can't do things. So I think this is going to be the, the next costuming. Well, Erin St. Blaine has done a couple yeah. costumes with this stuff. It's a little different than EL. There's other restrictions. You know, it's nothing's perfect. Yeah. Um, but this is translucent, and we're selling it right now in 4 millimeter and 5 millimeter, which works best with the emitters we have. So the nice thing is it's flexible. It's not as flexible as EL wire, which is bendable, and it stays. This is, you'd actually have to sew it to keep it in place. Um, you can bend it, you know, this much. Eventually, I think it will crack because it is plastic. Yeah. But, you know, you can bend it. So we have some other colors. And, uh, yeah, so the, the tubing is clear, but then we have emitters. So the emitters yeah. are in red. And that's what controls the, the color. That's what makes it colorful. It's an LED, basically. Yeah. So you get red, blue, uh, green. The green's really nice. Blue and white. And I'll show, I'll show the colors because I have a little time. Yeah. So here's how you use it. Yeah, you know, and I, you know, I yeah. We got all the photos that you can see. So is. these are, um, it's a 12 volt LED. There's a bunch of LEDs, actually three LED die, because it's to be really bright. That's the thing about this fiber optic. You have to really emit the heck out of it. And then of course, you know, it's it's extremely bright. It's not the. I think you could probably sand it a little bit to maybe get it even more diffused. Um, but it, it does light up and it's quite bright in here, so it, it, of course in the dark it looks better. Um, all you do is you loosen this plastic screw, which you can even do by hand. Um, and this is a heat sink metal tubing that it uh, is, is super bright, but it uh, holds the tubing in place right up against uh, the lens. And then, so let's try another color. So this color I think is green. So I'm powering it with 12 volts. You can power it with as little as, um, nine volts but it won't be as bright 12 is really recommended so uh you know eight double a or triple a batteries is good or you know a, a dual uh a, a tri lipo battery pack would also be pretty good um and then yeah it gives you it is going to be brighter at the uh emitting end here but beyond that it's pretty clear all around and the photos are of course show it better it's, it's tough to show because this is a very bright room uh, with all the lighting in here but it uh, gives you a nice green color. And then, yeah, we have blue and uh, white, pink and red. I think the green's kind of the brightest, but you know, you can also, uh, if you look at Erin's projects, she actually glues these onto the ends of NeoPixels and you can get, it's not yeah. gonna be as bright as like a one watt LED, but um, it will be kind of bright. So for costuming, if you want like lighting effects, but you don't want EL, this is pretty much your alternative. All right. Seems like we got a request already, an ultraviolet emitter, that'd be kind of cool. You, I mean, by the way, like yeah. you can actually take apart the emitter you, if you wanted you, to. You could do this. And um, just you, get can, a pretty high you can put whatever, you mean, the emitter's be. nice just because it has this little like clamping thing, but it's just like an LED with a heat sink. So you can replace this part yeah. if you like. And then it lenses, has a little bit of a lens and a heat sink. And then this is just the part that clamps on to um, the tubing. Yep. So, and then of course you can cut the tubing. It's just plastic, so you can cut it with diagonal cutters or whatever you like. And if you want a really nice effect, you know, you could have uh, two colors, two different colors on each end. Oh yeah. And then of course you can PWM the LEDs, which you can't do with EL, you can't dim it. But this, of course, you can dim all you like. That's cool. Okay. All right, and then we have the, the star of the show, besides the community, and you, Lady Ada, is, this new product, 
It's airlift. airlift but we also have a coming metro. soon that we'll show after. But this is this is the one. This yes. Is the, this is the one. The airlift light. Well, people would like the Pi Portal, and that was cool. But what if you wanted something that was a Metro M4, but an airlift? This is the light version. Um, we will also eventually soon have a version that has more memory, uh, has the bigger chip uh, for the main processor. But this is a SAMD 51J19. Works with Arduino and CircuitPython. Um, with both, it works really well. It's a lovely chip. Comes with 512K of flash, 192K of RAM, which is plenty of RAM. Um, for getting most internet data and buffering it. And then, you know, you can, uh, there's two megabytes of SPI QSPI flash on it for storing CircuitPython or Arduino files. And then, of course, uh, I shoved things around to make room for the ESP32. So there's the ESP32 module on there, which is the Wi-Fi coprocessor. Now, ESP32 doesn't have native USB. It has good peripherals, but it doesn't have, especially if you want that native USB, it doesn't have that. Uh, it doesn't run CircuitPython, um, and there might be other things that it's not as good as, as a uh, native like Cortex ARM M4. And for that, you why would not use, combine them? So why not combine them? Because I think the ESP32 was really good at is it has TLS 1.2, it handles certificates, uh, it has all the certificates burnt in already for you, it has all the memory for um, buffering your sockets, you can grab data. So one of the demos I did is, um, you know, you can have the ESP32 grab MP3 audio data from uh, WebStream, and then the M4 will decode the MP3 and output it to the DAX. Again, you could probably do it, you know, natively with an ESP32, but I really like the Cortex M4. I think it's a great processor. And again, CircuitPython, these are a super pair because you get the ease of use of Python and file system editing and that powerful Wi-Fi coprocessor. This is a really good pairing. Um, so now it's a Metro shape. So it's pretty much the exact same pinout as the Metro M4 uh, original, non-Wi-Fi version. Um, all the pins are there. And uh, all it has is, yeah, basically move the LEDs around to make room for the CSP32. And then our code for CircuitPython and Arduino work great. You can use it with um, Arduino Wi-Fi sockets. Or in CircuitPython, you, we have a requests library that I really like to use. It makes it really easy. And then you um, store all your credentials on the file system. And that's Metro M4 Airlift. Okay. Pretty nice. Next up, sign up now. This is going to go fast, but we're talking about it tonight. So we're, yes, we're putting we will them in the have store. them tomorrow like, or the next day, yeah. very soon. This is the pie badge. So Phil and I were at uh, a vegan restaurant, and we were mm -hmm. like, what? <laughs> the food's taking a while to get here. And we're like thinking, well, what can we fit into a credit card-sized circuit board? Um, and I thought, well, you know, there's Make Code Arcade. I want to make something for Make Code Arcade. And let's make something that's a, basically a badge. It can be used for arcade, gaming, or badge. It's kind of a twofer, right? Because a lot of times when you have a badge, you want it to display, you know, maybe an icon or an animation or text, and you want to have some buttons and LEDs. Well, those could also be used for a gaming platform. So we just made the buttons, you know, arcade-like on the front. You get eight buttons, start, select, A, B, and the directional buttons. And one of the things that I can't show you in a photo is the buttons. Um, I got these special buttons that have silicone molded tops, so they're really nice and squishy. Like, they have a click to them, but they have a squishy click feel, which is very satisfying um, and is a lot nicer than just a plain button. But you kind of have to feel them to, to know what I'm talking about, so just imagine that in your head. On the back, you've got feather headers, so you can plug in any feathering you like. It also has stomach connectors, so you can plug in NeoPixels or sensors or I2C. Uh, the I2C port's also Grove compatible, so you can plug in Grove sensors. Um, we've got five RGB NeoPixels on the front, so you can have it like sparkle and dazzle. You can use it for gaming if you want to have feedback to the user. Um, and a 1.8 inch TFT display with 160 by 128 pixels. Runs CircuitPython, runs MakeCode, runs Arduino. I can actually show some demos. Yep. Of it. It's got even a buzzer built in. Um, so here's one demo I just uh, put together. So um, because it's running a SAMD51 inside, uh, which is, my, again, my favorite processor, it's uh, incredibly fast. It can, it can run like pretty much any game or emulator. Um, like, for example, I'm porting NES emulating to it right now. But um, if you want, you can run Game Reno games. So I just have to get out of here. So, for example, here's uh, a Game Reno game. Um, for playing Tetris. And it's got a little buzzer, which is squeaking. I can make it close and you can hear the buzzing. It can beep, 
and tweak. Uh, you can also put a larger speaker on the back if you uh, want. Um, it has a uh, spot for one of our 8 ohm speakers. Um, it has an on off switch so you can save power. It can run off of a LiPo battery. There's a spot for a LiPo here. It has accelerometer, uh, light sensor. You can dim the backlight. Um, with one of our like 350 milliamp hour batteries, I got five, six hours of, of game life. So it, you know, it's, it's not too much power. And it's got holes so you can um, mount it into an enclosure if you like, or of course wear it as a badge, which I thought would be kind of neat. Especially with Python, it shows up as a disk drive, and then you can have graphics or um, sounds or animations or whatever, like you saw that animated GIF player, or you could have that on here and have it play animated GIFs as a badge, and then have you know, the LEDs light up. So I think this will be kind of a neat platform for people, um, especially if you want to do games or events you just want something low cost that has kind of everything built in and it's coming soon so sign up um, we'll have some in stock really soon we did our first run and uh, more coming out and um, again we've got circuit python support so we display io and in arduino we have arcada and then it runs make code arcade as well they have a make code arcade game maybe i'll show that real fast and that's a drag and drop um, gaming platform yeah, so this is uh, Flappy Duck, which is <laughs> as hard as <laughs> Flappy Bird is. I can, I can only get like two points. But this game is uh, made completely with drag and drop programming. And um, it's neat because you can play it on your web browser, like as an emulator to kind of simulate the game, and then um, download good. it as a UF2 file onto uh, the Pi Badge to play it. So check that out. Sign up and you'll be notified when we have in stock. Okay. Whew, that was so much stuff. new. 